Hello guys, in this video I'm going to talk about a wheel and axle. Let's first start defining what a wheel and axle is. So an axle is a rod that connects to a wheel or a lever and a wheel and axle involves two objects attached in the center, one of which turns the other. So if you turn the axle, the wheel will turn and if you turn the wheel, the axle will turn. These are two examples of a wheel and axle. The clock is one of them. Now, what is a wheel and axle? A wheel and axle is a simple machine that rotates in a circle around a center, which we call the axle. So the center of the wheel and the axle is called the axle. And as you can see here, that we have a wheel. So this is an example of a wheel. And as you can see in the blue arrow and red arrow, are going with the same direction, which is clockwise. So if you rotate the axle clockwise, the wheel will rotate also clockwise. If you rotate the axle counterclockwise, the wheel will also go counterclockwise. They always follow the same direction. Okay, these are some examples of wheels and axles. We have the bicycle, the pencil sharpener, a car, a roller skates, a fan, a wagon, a windmill, and many other more. So to sum up, a wheel and axle is a simple machine that is made of a wheel and has an axle which is connected to the center and we can use them in many ways. Now, how do they work? How do they work? Here is an example of uh, an, a wheel and an axle which is found in a bicycle. Bicycles have large wheels, so they go faster. When you pedal, you power the inside of the wheel, but the wheel's outer rim turns around faster and covers longer distance and covers more ground. So your paddling has much greater effect because when you paddle the bicycles, you are giving the effort on the axle and we will be discussing this further in next slides. So, we can apply the effort either on a wheel or on axle, okay? So, we need to apply effort either on a wheel or on an axle. In the door knob, okay, the one you can see here, we apply the effort here. So, I need to put my hand on this part so I'm applying the effort on the handle and the handle will go like a wheel in a, in a downward direction. So I'm in, in a circular direction actually because this is a wheel, okay? This is a wheel, although it does not round fully, but it's a wheel. When you pull it down, the axle inside that you cannot see will also turn right or turn clockwise, which will open the door. So you are applying the effort. So effort is here you are applying the effort on the uh, handle or on the wheel, okay? And the load is on the uh, axle, okay? So you can see that you uh, the, the handle, which is the wheel, will go over longer distance, longer distance compared to the distance that the load will will go. So the load will, will, uh, will turn over a small distance. So... In this case, the load is larger than the effort because if you remember when we mentioned that when we have the high, uh, the distance is more, then the force is less. And when the distance is less, the force is more. So the load is greater in the axle. When you apply the effort on the handle, you have a more load on the axle. So you need to apply less effort, less effort when you have a doorknob. But if your doorknob is broken, then you need to apply the force on the axle to open the door and you will find it very difficult because you need more force because the distance became very short. Okay? Another example of, um, of uh, a wheel and axle is the Ferris wheel. And in the Ferris wheel, we apply effort inside on the axle. When you apply, because imagine someone is, is standing up next to the Ferris wheel and trying always to push the people downward with his hand to applying force on the wheel. It will be very difficult. 
So we usually apply force on the axle in a Ferris wheel. When we apply the force on the axle, the wheel will turn in the same direction. But we need more effort. But the good thing is that we are not doing the effort. We use engines to in, and motors in order to rotate the axle. When we rotate the axle, we get the wheel to rotate. So when you apply force to the wheel, you use less force. Like when you apply the, the, the force here, we use less force, less effort. But when we apply force to the axle, we use more effort. So this is how we can compare both. So you can either apply the force on a wheel or on an axle. But when you apply it on a wheel, you need less effort while when you apply it on an axle you need more effort so mentally when we apply it on an axle the mechanical advantage is less than one and when we apply it on the wheel the mechanical advantage is greater than one okay keep this in mind guys now the mechanical advantage also depends on three important things it depends first on the diameter of the wheel, on the diameter of the axle, and where the effort is applied. So diameter of the wheel, this is the diameter of any circle. A circle has a diameter. The diameter is passing through the center, and this is a diameter. This is a diameter. This is a diameter of the wheel, okay? And the diameter of the axle, and where the effort is applied, whether it's applied to the axle or whether it is applied to the wheel. Okay, let me clear this and this is off. Okay, so uh, when you apply the effort to the wheel, as I mentioned, the mechanical advantage is greater than one. Apply effort to the wheel, so effort on the wheel, يعني the mechanical advantage is greater than one. But when you apply the effort on the axle, you will get a mechanical advantage which is smaller to one because the diameter of the wheel is larger than the diameter uh, of the axle, okay? The diameter of the wheel is larger than the diameter of the axle, okay? And it's very important to know where the effort is applied. So if you apply the effort, uh, for example, on the wheel, it, it's very different when you apply the axle, the, when you apply the effort, I mean, on the axle, okay? So the mechanical advantage is less than one when the effort is applied to the axle. And when we have a larger wheel, okay, compared to the axle, not even, let, let's take this example. I have here a large wheel and here a small wheel. Which one you think has more mechanical advantage? Which one you think has more mechanical advantage? The larger the wheel compared to the axle, which means the greater the mechanical advantage. So the mechanical advantage of this wheel is bigger than the mechanical advantage of this wheel because compared to the axle, imagine, uh, imagine the axle is the same size, okay? Imagine the axle has the same diameter, which is, for example, one meter, one meter. So if these have the same diameter, but the wheel has different diameter, this wheel, let's say it has a diameter of two meter, and this wheel has a diameter of three meter, then definitely the mechanical advantage of the wheel, of the larger wheel, is greater than the mechanical advantage of the smaller wheel. We can only compare if the axle diameter is the same similar when we are comparing fractions we care for the diameters to be for the denominator to be the same so here we care for the uh, axle diameter to be the same okay this is also a ferris wheel so the mechanical advantage when we uh, when we try to rotate the wheel it will be uh, definitely uh, greater than one but when we are rotating in the uh, center in the axle, we will get a mechanical advantage which is less than one. Okay? So, also, if you have, for example, this is a Ferris wheel, and this is a Ferris wheel which is smaller. Okay? We have here the center, the axle, and here we have the axle. 
okay and let's say that the axles are the same so the larger the wheel compared to the axle the smaller the mechanical advantage now this is only when you are applying what when we are applying the effort to the axle effort apply to axle when you apply effort to axle like on the ferris wheel okay when you have large wheel when you have large wheel then it has uh, the larger the wheel the smaller the mechanical advantage so here mechanical advantage is smaller than the mechanical advantage here because i am applying uh, the effort on the axle but when i'm using these wheels and i'm applying the effort on the wheel because it matters okay then the mechanical advantage is greater so here i'm applying the effort on the wheel okay i'm applying the effort on the wheel but when i apply the effort on the axle the effort on the axle then the comparison will be otherwise so the 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 larger the wheel the less the mechanical advantage and you need to be careful when we apply the effort to the axle the mechanical advantage is always less than one okay it's always less than one it doesn't matter so if this is for example 0 0.5 this one is bigger so it's 0 0.8 for example okay because we need to do less effort in order to rotate a smaller wheel but we need to exert more effort in order to rotate a bigger wheel. So when you apply the effort to the axle, the larger the wheel, the smaller the mechanical advantage. And when you apply the effort to the wheel, the mechanical advantage of the larger wheel is bigger than the mechanical advantage of the smaller wheel. Okay, so finally, to sum up, when you apply the effort to the axle, the larger the wheel, the smaller the mechanical advantage, while when you apply the effort on the wheel, the larger the wheel, the larger the mechanical advantage. Finally, you need to remember that uh, in, in, uh, in, in, in this types of simple machine, the wheel and axle, and if you know sometimes they close the Ferris wheel because they tell you they are uh, uh, under maintenance because they need to add oils because of the friction which reduces the efficiency of the wheel and axle sometimes we need to add oils okay in order to make it uh, to, to reduce the friction when we reduce the friction we will get more efficiency okay or better efficiency so remember friction always affect the efficiency it's now quiz time we have two questions that you guys can solve easily if you paid attention to this presentation the person who gets the question right will be awarded with a cookie. I'm just joking, but you can write your answers down in the comment box. So what is an example of a wheel and axle? This is question number one. You can list the three examples. And how does wheels and axles work? Explain simply how they work. And that's it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another videos.